Let us move on from that one. There he is, Simon Michelle. No mucking around. Into Bonds we go with some gusto, uh, except there's a bit of a, a chink in that scenario. Political uncertainty has rather uh, affected that 10-year note, has it not, in the US? Yes, and it, look, it certainly has, and we've certainly uh, seen some downward movement in, in, in yields. They're off about a quarter of a percent from their peak uh, earlier this month, so fairly significant movement. The 30-year US rate below 3%, again, down at 2.98. And this is really about people re-evaluating their expectation uh, after the political uh, turmoil we saw in the, in the US mm. in relation to health care. What's that going to affect taxes? How's that going to affect fiscal policy? Mm. How's it going to affect growth? And how's that going to get, uh, affect inflation? And uh, all of those are being downgraded at the moment, and that's reflected in those lower yields. All right, some foam on the runway from the Reserve Bank, by contrast, or just uh, do nothing and uh, wait for a real fire to emerge? I think the second, I think we're not going to see a lot of action. I think it's going to be a very, uh, very quiet uh, meeting next week. Uh, you know, let's, let's face it, um, you know, the RBA would have to do something fairly major to take a bit of focus off what's happening in the US at the moment, mm. uh, driving rates. So, uh, look, I don't expect to see any move there. Look, interestingly, obviously, as the US, uh, US rates have fallen, mm. uh, the comparative margin of ours increases, dollar increases on the back of that. So, uh, you know, we're certainly of the view US rates moving down is moving in the opposite direction the RBA wants. What's intriguing is that we're at 76.83 or thereabouts against the greenback. Now, correct if I'm wrong, May of last year, we got a cut at 77. So we're, we're barely, what, 15, less than 15 bips off that level. And we're not saying the Reserve Bank even has to insert an easing bias into the statement? Look, I, th I think that, you know, what they've tried to do is they've tried to sort of stay on the sideline, really, essentially. And, uh, you know, we, we have seen commentators calling for lower cash rates. Um, we are equally seeing other commentators suggest rates, rates need to go up. Mm. But it's been really driven by central bankers around the globe, uh, you know, by, by Europe still throwing money at the situation, mm. uh, by Japan, China, uh, seeing, you know, a couple of positive signs out there, and what the US does. We've seen, uh, you know, increase in uh, December, uh, oh, six, I mean, because, I mean, this, this was meant to be the year of fiscal reform, getting your house in order and actually doing rather than basically outsourcing to central banks. It sounds as if someone didn't get the memo. Well, someone certainly hasn't got the memo. I mean, you're absolutely right. Central banks are still at the wheel um, and likely to continue. I mean, we saw earlier this year, for example, the US, they're going to sit on their $4.5 trillion of uh, treasuries. They're not even starting to sell those down. So you're right, Carson. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, talk is one thing. But as we know, in the meantime, the commodity story that was looking so enviable, certainly for the exchequer, is starting to look so, so ropey, is it not? I mean, look at, look at that oil price, for one. This is true, absolutely, that's right. And that's certainly going to impact on, uh, on growth moving forward and, and inflation, obviously, as well. And uh, it's being a bit of a key driver to the softer, uh, you know, expectations and that pullback that you've seen in, uh, you know, in the US. We had uh, one of the Fed members, Charles Evans, come out and he sort of suggested that he doesn't really see US core inflation getting up to the level that the US is starting to build into its future forecast. Mm. So we are seeing some unwinding of that. Simon, is now the time to be flirting with green bonds as our biggest home loan lender is doing, uh, what do we make of this? The five-year green bond from CBA in an, an environment of uncertainty, will there be significant uh, long-term believers in this one? Well, it's interesting. I mean, this uh, CBA is the last of our four major banks to issue a green bond or a climate bond. And these really are being uh, issued on the back of demand from investors. So you have a lot of... Uh, superannuation funds, you have a lot of private uh, funds out there that really want to start bringing in a bit of an ethical screen on their investments. So we saw the first um, uh, gender equality bond issued by one of the major banks a couple of weeks ago as well. And that again was driven by a lot of the super funds that want to start incorporating uh, more social responsible investment into their portfolios, not necessarily driven by the issuers. Yeah, call it ethical and she'll be right. Thank you, Simon. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Carson. All the very best. Simon and Michelle there from FEG. We take a really short break.